All right, everybody, back again with American Viking Testing. Uh, today we're going to do something a little different. I know we've done thousand round tests, we've done knife tests, we've done um, you know waterproof match tests, we've done seven point six two by thirty nine. I got an AR ten uh, test that we're about to release. We got three fifty legend tests out there. We got all kinds of different stuff that we've been doing and in the works. Um, but we wanted to stop, and there's been a lot of questions about builds, um, quality of builds, what you're going to get, and what's affordable out there um, that will still send lead down range. Uh, so we went on to uh, PSA, Palmetto State Armory, uh, and we got and picked this up for 29 bucks. I can't believe we got this lower for 29 bucks. This is a Palmetto State Armory lower. They called it a blend. Now, I looked everywhere on this thing, and even the person I do my FFL with, a store uh, right down the road from us, uh, they could not find a blimp on this thing anywhere. Uh, so we're going to do an assembly on this one, and we also picked up directly from Palmetto State Armory uh, an actual lower build. Now, I am a huge one about trigger pull, so we went for our, the little bit of the nicer one. So I'm gonna unbox this here real quick, show you what's on the inside, then we're gonna build it, then we're gonna put an upper on it and send a bunch of lead down range and see exactly how an affordable build with a $29 blim lower from PSA and with their build kit on there for a lower AR-15. Now this is multi-caliber, so I, I can put any of my 7.62 by 39 AR upper, maybe a 5.56, maybe the 22, maybe the 350 uh, Legend. We'll find out what we're gonna put on top of it and to send some lead down range. And then uh, really wanna put this thing to the test and find out how well it's gonna perform, how long it will hold up. So inside this lower box, we got the enhanced polished trigger group. It was only 109. So all together, you're looking about 140, not half bad. 140 for complete enhanced polished trigger, lower, and a course. It was with the Magpul. I, I love me some Magpul. Now the Great thing about this is Palmetto State Arms put everything together in one bag. So all of our parts that we're gonna need, they're individually packaged. We already opened up, checked if everything was there. Hands Paul's trigger, all in one bag. Everything's in one bag. So if you're doing stage by stage, depending on the time that you have, um, this is a great way of doing it. So everything is gonna be broken down by bags on the inside there, so you don't have to worry about the detents, the springs, or knowing, hey, I wanna go ahead and put this on, or I wanna go ahead and put this on. It's all right there, okay? Now, they are pretty clear about what's Magpul in here and what's Palmetto State Armory. Everything came in a PSA bag that was for the lower parts. You know that's PSA. Magpul obviously is gonna come in Magpul stocks. The great thing about doing a build is you can make it in all kinds of different colors. You can buy uh, flat dark earth, you can buy OD green, you can get the, the, the reds, the blues, the greens, the camos, all the other kind of fun stuff that's out there. And you can really make a lower the way that it is. It's the MOE Magpul. I got a lower that's completely an MOE uh, Magpul build. Uh, it's one of my favorites. Uh, go back and check it out. It's it's on that uh, 7.62 by 39, um, and it, it runs flawlessly, man. My groupings out of that sucker with the uh, uh, the Bear Creek Arsenal upper, and of course the uh, the Magpul Palmetto State Arm lower runs great. So everything's in the bags and ready to go. Let's get to the build. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start off with the course. The magazine catch, spring, and button. Um, I'm doing this as I'm looking through the camera filming for you guys. I really want to show you how it, easy it is to really build a inexpensive AR uh, lower receiver. And also taking consideration, I got big, gigantic, sausage-like hands. 
my wife says I have Shrek-like features, uh, and so do my kids. So, uh, not my looks, but definitely the, my size. So, I'm a big old boy, and there ain't nothing wrong with it. So, it doesn't matter how big you are or how small you are. Putting this together should be fairly simple, uh, and let's just go ahead and get right to it. I always like to put in the actual catch itself. Make sure the catch is perfectly lined up. Should fit in there fairly simple, fairly smoothly. You're just gonna go ahead and drop the spring right on top of that. Should give a little bit of bounce. Should be a little bit, you see where the, the spring is sitting above it you should have good pressure. If you, if you have springs or matching up or lining up, you need to rethink your build and get some uh, a different lower build. So what I like to do is go ahead and press a little bit of on here and twist, go ahead and get it started on this side. Once it's started on this side, it's easy enough just to go ahead and push it on through for the other side. And then once you got the press through on the on that side, you just see the gap and flip it over and you just go clockwise with it. Till it tightens up. Fairly simple. Just keep the pressure on there. Once it starts about rubbing that chamber, that's when you just sit it right back in there. Now, here's a couple cool little hints for you. You see where it's catching the mag right inside. There's the mag well itself. Couple things. One, if it's kicking out too far on this side, that means it's one too loose and won't properly see it in the mag. Two, if it's too loose, then this catch right here won't be protruding into the mag well and it will not stop the actual mag or catch the mag. So let's put that to the test, shall we? All right, I love testing along builds. So we're gonna take this Men 2 mag. I got a of course a Punisher wrap on there. It's completely empty, it is safe, but I always love testing out stuff when you can. So we're gonna test out this mag release, make sure that it not only fits in the mag well correctly to the lower, but that the actual works correctly. Obviously good and tight inside of there. Obviously nice, nice and smooth. You can loosen it up if you want a little bit, um, but you could do that after the build. It's just as simple as pushing the button all the way in and then going counter clockwise with it once or twice. Get a good comfortable feel for where you like that button at. Too stiff, doesn't work. Just being honest, you want a nice quick release. Too loose, won't catch the mag correctly. So always make sure not only is your mag seated up there correctly, but when you hit that button, you got action. All right, next we're gonna start with the bolt catch. Now the Palmetto State Armory uh, lower set that I got and with this uh, lower receiver, it comes with an actual pin right here instead of a screw. I know like Aero Precisions, ATI, some of the other ones that are out there actually have a screw, a, a tiny little Allen wrench or even a Phillips screw that you would screw in right here. This one actually comes with a bolt. I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, if I have to say one qualm about some of these lower parts that I've seen so far, um, everything has looked so far flawless as I'm doing this build on the Palmetto State Armory receiver and of course the lower, uh, complete lower MOE Magpul kit, but I hate the pins. The pins came so expanded that I had to use um, a pair of pliers to extremely clamp them down. I started with a regular set of pliers to clamp them down. Almost went to my, uh, <laughs> almost went to a vice to completely clamp them down. Thankfully, I got them enough in there, and I went ahead and pre-tapped it. So if you're ever dealing with a pin set, go ahead and start start by clamping down the pins, starting it, 
And of course, save yourself some time. Get yourself a nice punch set. Uh, you can get a set off of Amazon. You can get a set off of their site. You can get a set off, off basically almost anywhere, even at, you know, hardware stores. And of course, rubberized mallet so you're not marring up your actual receiver as you're actually doing your build. All right, so let's go ahead and do the bolt catch, the plunger, the spring the pin has already started. So we're gonna go ahead and drop our plunger right inside that hole for that bolt catch right there. Just go ahead and insert your spring right after. It should easily just slide right on top. I always like to check the tension right in there and make sure it lined up and went over completely and your springs aren't being bent off to the side. And then it's just simply dropping it in. big old hands trying to do this for <laughs> uh, looking through a camera instead of looking this dead on. I had it upside down when I picked it up. All right, so we're gonna slightly hold this in. It should stay about flush. So the hole on the inside of the bolt catch should completely line up. And so we're just gonna hold that flush there. And this is why I don't like the punch, because you're trying to hold a spring-loaded bolt catch and then pick up a punch set and a hammer to tap it in. We're gonna tap this in just a little bit more. Get it a little closer in. Fill it where it's starting to catch just a little bit. And that's where you feel it catching right in there and just go ahead and once it's caught, you can see how it's flush all the way across the board. I'm trying to do it so you can see through my, my big old bear claws. Again, this is why I say I hate the ones with the uh, um, the little pins that are expanded pins that you got to clamp down because they are, are gigantic pain in the butt to get in there. But I do have to say every Palmetto State arm or uh, lower that I have has been absolutely flawless. So I mean, I can't knock their design too much. Just if you're doing a build, it's probably not the easiest. You can see the pins just going in slowly but surely. Just a little tap, tap, tap a -roo. Until it's flush. I like to use one that's a, just to give you a heads up. If you do have a punch set, use one that's a little bit bigger than the pin itself. Um, that way you're not constantly sliding off the top of it. Put this where you guys can see it. And almost flush on this side. All right. So there you go. That's the next part of that bolt catch right there. Should be able just to easily push onto that, make sure it's gonna be able to do the job that it's meant to do. If it is, then you're good to go. Let's get on to that next part. All right, next we're gonna go ahead and start on the, of course, the takedown pins front and back. Of course, we got the uh, takedown uh, pin springs and detents. If you look at the front of the receiver right here, it's actually gonna have where the spring and then the detent's gonna go into. The cool thing about this, I don't know if you guys ever looked at this, but your takedown pins actually have a canoe funneled um, notch right on the inside. That's why you need that, that spring to go in there. So when you're pulling them out, it's actually gonna catch. 
and does not actually pop out on you. Uh, some people already know that. Some people like, duh. Uh, some people don't know this is the first time ever building. So I figure I'd just go ahead and break this down for you and show you a little bit about the build itself. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put that spring right at the top that I showed you. And go ahead and put the detent in flat bottom first. Pointy side up, big old bear claws trying to do this on film. And then what I like to do is take the actual take down pin itself, slightly press down and then slide in. You fill it catch on the inside right here of that canoe out part, the funnel that part, and then pop right in. And it should just click right in there. So if you're ever doing a takedown itself, it should automatically catch, which it did perfectly. And you can see just right in here, that detent perfectly catching it. All right, and you're gonna basically do the same exact thing with the back side right here. The detent on this one is going to go into it first, okay? Um, that way it goes all the way through and catches. And then we're gonna go ahead and put on the buffer tube spring, all that kind of fun stuff on the back end of this. Make sure everything's all caught up completely. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do that part. And then we're gonna put on the, uh, the buffer tube spring and then the course the pin right here. All right, on to the next part of the build. Uh, so we got the takedown pin up front, like I showed you in the first part uh, just a couple of seconds ago. Then we went ahead and lined up the takedown pin for the back. Remember, you got to put that detent in first, put the pin in, detent into the back hole first, then the spring. Okay. Once you got that lined up, always check, make sure it's actually reaching, that detent's actually reaching. You can sort of just wiggle around and make sure it's actually catching correctly inside of there. Then we're going to move on to, of course, the buffer tube, spring, castle nut, all that kind of stuff. I highly suggest having the right tools. Have yourself a castle nut wrench uh, to make sure that everything's tightened down correctly. You will experience, if you have the wrong buffer tube, the wrong springs, and all that kind of stuff in any of your builds, or even the ones you buy, you're gonna experience, I mean, jamming on your bolt catch, you're gonna experience misfeeds, double feeds, uh, jamming sto stove pipe and all kinds of stuff because a lot of gases not only go out the front part of the gas port but also the back end, uh, hence why your buffer tube is gonna have a hole on the end of it. All right, now one cool thing I do like about Palmetto State Armory is the MOE Magpul Complete Lower Kit with the Hands Polished Trigger is because the buffer tube actually comes, if you look, comes with this little lip right here and the notch, okay? So when that pin is sitting, it's completely just sitting right there on the inside. I'll show you that here in just a second. Unlike standard tubes that do not have that lip at all, okay? So this is a standard uh, six position tube. I got bunch of AR parts, um, but this build right here, I like that the kit comes with that little swoop down and that catch right up front. That's a, that's a great feature, uh, keeps things tight and, and stops things from moving. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do just a couple things to pre-prep ourselves to go ahead and get that ready and then we're gonna move on to um, the build. So what I like to do is get all of your stuff on your buffer tube sort of ready. Your castle nut's gonna go. Make sure the teeth, the teeth itself, go to the back of the buffer tube. The reason why is when you go and catch it with your castle nut wrench, you're not gonna be able to do it when it's completely up by there. You wanna be able to slide it in from the back end and then tighten, okay? So it's highly imperative that you put it on there correctly. Uh, a lot of videos out there don't explain that. 
um, and I don't know why. So we're gonna go ahead and put it all the way to the back. We're gonna go ahead and put it on so everything's lined up like this, okay? Then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is give it a couple good turns. We're gonna get that started. Not too much, because we still gotta put it in at the stopper and the spring right there. But we're gonna go ahead and get it started. Almost about where the spring is on the front end, and that's basically where I like to stop. The reason why is because I like to go ahead and push in and then screw down, uh, making sure everything's nice and tight. And that way you're, you can ensure that your spring is not gonna be bent also. So we're gonna go ahead and get this spring in the catch out of the package, pop that bad boy right in. Very standard, very simple. I don't know of a super duper, you know, high class way of doing this uh, part. I haven't seen any other builds. This is about the, as standard as you can get on an AR build. I'm gonna put it basically face down, right in, and just hold down with your finger. Pretty simple. And as we have this pressed down with our finger, right up in front, I know I got big old fingers, but you can actually see that held down right here. I'm gonna go ahead, turn down just a little bit so it gets a little bit better. And as soon as that hits that spring, go ahead and move it forward. You'll wanna make, make sure you don't bend that spring. Go ahead and wiggle it all the way forward, making sure that spring stays nice and tight, and you can feel it locking in. All right, and you've been holding it down long enough that you got it right down the, and you should see if I'm pushing it up far enough here in the video for you. Like I said, I'm trying to do this while looking through the camera. Uh, you should see where that little notch on this enhanced tube, you should see it perfectly fall right inside of where the pin is. And then, of course, you've had the spring for, of course, the takedown pin and the detent for your takedown on the back. And you're just moving the castle nut up. It's just the way I do it. Um, there's a couple different, you know, tricks of the trade that everyone likes. And then you just take, of course, castle nut wrench. And then make sure it's nice and tight. Pretty standard, pretty simplistic to do. Um, I just like moving it around. Once I get it to a point where the tube's far enough forward, I can move it around and hold that part with my finger and hold it down and just tighten the tube just the last little bit as it's adjusting. And then now you're ready for the spring. Now sometimes you should be able to spring, sit the spring directly inside of the buffer tube without having to hold it down. If you do need to hold the pin down, you can, but it should just simply slide in and then catch the pin itself. That's the buffer tube, spring, and ready to go. All right, let's move on to the trigger. All right, on to the trigger. Um, if you're watching this video and you want to know exactly how to get your hammer springs and your trigger springs lined up, take a picture. Simple enough. You just pop one on one side, one on the other side. Um, this Palmetto State Armory um, box, the lower complete set that I got, did come with that enhanced polish trigger. It is, man, it feels like freaking silk. There's no drag on this as I'm rubbing my fingers across it. It is absolutely wonderful. Um, makes for a smoother action. The springs do feel like they may be a, a five to four and a half pull. 
Um, I went ahead and ordered JP Enterprises uh, three and a half pound trigger pull. I switched it, all of mine to JP Enterprises, uh, but for the purpose of the build and do the video and going through the complete lower kit, uh, we're just gonna go ahead and go with the regular springs. So we got, of course, the trigger, the hammer, the disconnector, the two pins, and the disconnector spring. Now, inside of the uh, trigger itself, you're gonna look for the fatter side of this disconnector spring. Um, inside of my fingers, you probably won't see it, but I can see, if I can get it up to the video long enough to show you the fatter side. You're gonna put that right down inside of this notch right here, inside of the trigger. Itty bitty little parts, big gigantic bear paws. You gotta love it. And you just fit it right down in there and it should lock in pretty well. Man, I actually like the way that this connector uh, spring fills. Uh, it's ni nice and tight inside of there. All right, so obviously we're gonna go ahead and drop the trigger right inside the lower. Pretty simple. Disconnector is gonna go right in there. Now, the disconnector is going to line up with the pinholes. So you wanna make sure that this disconnector, this back little part right here, this little notch, it's gonna go over that spring, that disconnector spring. So it's gonna face just like this on the actual trigger. You wanna make sure that this hole lines up. Now, I've been pointing a lot of stuff out uh, with one of my push rods, but I'm gonna go ahead and line up and put my push rod through. If you guys don't have a push rod set, get one, it really helps out. Having the proper tools on the AR build is absolutely vital, it makes things a lot easier. Can you do without it? Heck yeah. Uh, can you spend, you know, 30 bucks on Amazon and get all the uh, like stuff you really need to build out an AR? Yeah. So just, or at least an AR lower, there's some other stuff for an upper, um, but get your stuff that you need. It's, it's fairly inexpensive and then you'll have it for every other build or for fixing um, and working on your gun going forward. So we're gonna go ahead and line that up. Just like I said, that back part went over the spring right inside of there. And we're gonna go ahead and line this up so the hole of the trigger is right here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and line that disconnector and that trigger hole up with my rod. Sometimes it takes just a little bit of wiggling around just to make sure everything's in there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and push that all the way through the other end, okay? That's gonna hold everything in place. So when you get ready to put everything in, you can just basically reverse tap that bad boy and it should line up for you, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and start that process by putting the pin in. And then I like to hold the push rod, not very tight with my fingers on the back end, but just loosely to guide it so it's straight. So it's just slightly smaller. And I don't want it to go flying completely out and then lose that lineup. And then a couple more taps and then we're there. All right. So you see, should see the disconnect right on top. Of course, the back side is of the disconnector. That little cutout is over the disconnector spring that is placed inside of the trigger itself. And you should see good action inside of it. All right, now to go ahead and put the hammer in. Uh, you can see exactly how it's laid on top of there see where it's catching. We're actually inserting the hammer itself this way. 
on top of the actual trigger itself. And then we're gonna go ahead and put our punch pin through this side and hold it into place. Now you can see where the holes are and where it is there. So we're gonna have to put it in there, put a lot of tension on that spring itself to bring it down to match it up to the hole. So we're gonna put the legs of the spring for the hammer right on top of where the trigger is and then bend that back down. All right, we should have that pretty close being lined up for that side. trying to do this through a looking through the camera instead of doing it uh, face on product and on materials itself it's a little different <laughs> uh, but yeah so you can see how it's almost lined up we just push down just a little bit more we can get the push rod through and it's basically in place okay uh, if you want you can go ahead and test the function make sure it's lined up and ready which it is. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna be replacing these with the JP Enterprise three and a half pound trigger poles anyways. Um, coming soon, I got those on order, but I'm just gonna go ahead and finish off this build. So we're gonna back out this pin just a little bit. And then of course start the other side. So we're gonna line up our pins. with the amount of pressure on that spring, you wanna hold that pin pretty well in place. Don't, uh, don't give it as much flex as you did the first time around. And then you wanna also do your best to hold that in place, okay? Uh, sometimes you'll need to bend it forward like I'm doing right now with your finger. Um, sometimes you press it down it really depends on how you like doing it. Once you get the pin started, go ahead and just tap that bad boy in. And you can hear the pin kicking out the backside and rolling all the way forward. You're pretty much through. Making this one, in my personal opinion, one of the most important parts of an AR or an AR-10 or even just any kind of rifle or a handheld hand uh, uh, pistol is making sure that the uh, safety is operational on the, on the weapon itself. Uh, so when you're doing this, and I don't know if you've ever, if you're watching this for the first time and doing a build, key trick on this one, make sure that your hammer is actual down and I'll show you why. You see how that hole is completely clear for the safety. If it is up, it is actually has the back part of the ham, uh, of the trigger poking up through that hole. Um, so if you just simply just move the hammer down and make sure that's free and clear, you're able to go ahead and drop in your safety lever itself. Uh, you can see on there the actual where the detent is going to catch. The detent and the spring is going to go underneath and same with the handguard. Uh, that's why I'm going to be doing the handguard at the same time that I'm doing the safety simply for the fact that they have to go hand in hand in order for the spring to be locked in there securely and safe. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop in the safety. Always put it up. Make sure it goes through the other side. Sometimes you just need to push down just a little bit on the hammer, completely just slides through. Flip this over. Oh, knock the camera, sorry folks. And we're gonna drop the detent right in there. Now, if the detent doesn't go all the way down, you can go ahead and simply just tap it. If it's not going all the way down, that's because your safety is not in the right position and you just need to go ahead and wiggle it a little bit 
to drop down just a little bit more so you can just make sure it does catch. All right. Now that you can feel it catching on there, you can also see the detent just a little bit moving around. We're gonna go ahead and just keep it just like that. And we're gonna do the hand guard. Uh, it's a Magpul hand guard that came uh, with this lower uh, assembly parts. So, I mean, I, I've liked this build so far. The only thing I haven't really liked was those couple pins. Uh, those were a pain in the butt instead of screws, like some of those other AR builds that I've done in the past, uh, depending on which manufacturer sends me what. Uh, but this is a, you know, pretty standard. I mean, I have a lot of uh, lowers from Palmetto, which I actually enjoy. So I'm gonna put the spring right inside of there. That's gonna match up completely. You wanna make sure one very important thing, making sure that there is no bend on that spring as you're matching it up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hold that spring and then go ahead and drop in a nut for that. Get yourself a nice little long Allen wrench tool. Uh, this one, uh, of course, with Magpul does come with a flathead slash Allen wrench. Just like Allen wrench, it gives me a little bit more torque to it. Once you get it all lined up, we can go ahead and start this. All right, I sort of start this upside down just simply for the fact that everything is gonna be lined up when it's laying down like that. See how that spring just naturally fell into where that detent is? It's keeping everything flat and flush, which is a nice thing. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and slightly press down, making sure that the spring itself is not getting any bend to it at all. That is extremely important. And then we're just gonna go ahead and press down. Okay, should be flush at this point. Just go ahead and take your Allen wrench. Tighten everything up. tighter and that's why I said I like the Allen wrench instead of the flat head because I can actually put the tension that I want on there you don't want your parts loose I'll just put it that way all right so we're gonna flip it over make sure the uh, safety is working correctly which it is you can feel the detent catching it from each selection, from fire to safety. Make sure the safety itself works. And then of course, make sure fire works because you want to make sure it goes bang, bang. Pew, pew, which it does. All right, perfect. Next part is just putting on a couple accessories. We get, of course, the uh, Magpul stock, which we're going to throw on there. And of course, that was the uh, the pistol grip that we just installed on there. And this is coming out to be in a good build so far. All right, I'm going to show you how you guys look. And uh, here in just a second. All right, and that is the complete build all assembled on there. Uh, got some PMC Ektac um, that we're going to be throwing down some range. I love the fact that they send you some Magpul and some Palmetto State Armory uh, swag stickers with that. Um, but that is the lower assembly from a stripped receiver all the way to doing that whole entire uh, lower parts kit with the enhanced pulse trigger. And of course, the Magpul trigger guard, the pistol grip, and the butt stock on there, the sixth position on there. Hope you guys enjoy that. Obviously, I was, like I said, man, I got gigantic hands trying to do this uh, through the video. And then of course, I'm doing it as I'm looking through the camera. 
Um, so yeah, little bumps on the road. You know, I'm not really all that concerned about it. I wanted to make it so simple that anyone can do it. Very self-explanatory. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, share, and subscribe.